it's time to wrap up the infinity Thieves videos and take a look at the budget decks for let's do you guys also hear that Hey Carvalhos, welcome back to another episode of the Road to Next Stage. And today we've got an unexpected episode as Bushroot revealed two new cards for Gear Chronicle and one of them is a very interesting card, not only in artwork, but also in skills. Currently, every time we got new cards for Gear Chronicle for Astro Force or something else revealed related to Gear Chronicle, the usual experience would be somewhere around the ballpark that, oh, this is pretty neat for standard or it has some interesting application, but probably pretty useless in premium. However, that mindset changed today as these cards, or at least one of the cards, can be insane in Premium Gear Chronicle and especially in Timely. So let's jump right into these new cards and discuss and analyze what I mean with that and what these two new cards can mean for Gear Chronicle. And we start off with a brand new Grade 4 unit for none other than Gears. And that is, of course, Novel Around Dragon. This is probably the very first Grade 4 Gear Dragon that doesn't have the interdimensional dragon tag on the card itself. So what does this grade 4 has in store for us? His ability is Auto Vanguard Circle, when placed, costs Counter Plus 1 and discard 2 cards from your hand. Look at the free cards on the top of your deck and call them to rearguard circles. This, just like Rebellion, strives completely away from the whole bind mechanic aspect that we had with Idolized Dragon and Mystery Flare Dragon. So, no matter the circumstances, if we go into this thing from a Lost Legend or from a Chrono Fang, we can activate this ability no matter what. So, that's a pretty interesting aspect as this can be the most versatile grade 4 in any type of build as we're not restricted to our hand size to get an ability off, but we're also not restricted to the amount of cards in our bind zone with their grades respectively to activate those abilities. So that is a big plus in this card as it can be spliced in any type of build. But that's where the usefulness of this card actually ends as the skill has a pretty big flaw in itself. It's counter plus one, discard two. That's a pretty hefty cost. The major issue with this card is that you discard two cards for a possible trade-in for three new cards. So that's in itself a plus one and that is combated with the counter plus one cost. So it makes sense. But the problem is because you have no idea what you're going to call in the top three, there is a highly likely chance that in the top three there are two triggers or two very useless cards and only one target that you're happy with. The only thing is because of the discard synergy you can combine it with Chrono Fang Tiger or at least uh, Grade 1 Chrono Tooth Tigar where you can counter blast one and then draw a card that calls itself to the field. So if you have three counter blasts open you can go into this thing, discard two tooths and then call them to the field, draw two cards and have three other cards called to the field so you can build an entire field out of nowhere. That on paper sounds pretty good but in actuality, this will combat with everything what Chrono Fang is want to do. Because in the early game, you probably either want to guard very aggressively. And if you do that, then this can somewhat synergize with it. But you, the other way around is that you call units to the field and pressure your opponent. Meaning you already have a field present on the board. So going into this thing, calling three new units is probably not even ideal. As you already have a full field or at least most of your field is filled. So you're probably going to call over the other stuff. Also, if you did that, that means your hand size is probably on the lower side. Meaning going into Rebellion will probably give you more payout. Also, this card won't interact with Fang, so you cannot get the crit and the extra drive check. So it's just a 15k base with the call and the discard that you have with the Counter Blast. Also, this doesn't work in Lost Legend as well, because it has nothing to do with binding. And in actuality, is weaker than Idolize, because... Idolize can give you one free call. It doesn't cost you counter blast, so that's also a big thing. Because if, as if you combine this with Lost Legend, if you want to get the extra draw off, that's free counter blast. Idolize can give you a, a free call. Can put something from your opponent's field bottom deck, so you have some control. And if you were lucky with the amount of binding you could do, then you could call two cards from the drop zone and give power. 
And in that scenario, Idolize is completely better than this card because it's one, it's free. It costs the same amount of units, but two of the three, you have full control over what you want to call. So you can call what you need. And then on top of that, you can give some power to your field. So in a Lost Legend build, this card is to Idolize what Idolize was to Mystery Flare. And that is not a good thing. If they wanted to make this card interesting and give players more choices in deck building and giving a reason to run this card, then they needed to give this card a force marker. As the ability is pretty subpar to what we already have with the other great force in every kind of scenario. But if this card had a force marker, this means players can make a choice. All right, I'm going to... Start with a weaker grade 4 turn, if I went first or second, depending on what the scenario is. I'm not going to go in my very heavy pressure turn, just to get an extra force marker out of there in a turn. So I can end my grade first grade 3 turn with free force markers, so the following turn I can go in hard. And also, this will synergize to some extent with its ability, as if you can get the extra force marker out, so you have to grade 3, get a force marker, right to this grade 4, get another force marker... Now you can have two on the rearguard circles, and no matter what you call, even if it triggers, you're going to get value out of it. As you can call the trigger to the force mark, and it's a 15k attack. So you're not really bothered by the fact that you potentially need to call two, maybe even three triggers to the field. As you have those force markers to make those numbers hit. So sadly, this card will probably not be run in a lot of builds. But then again, this is a very... A nice addition to the clan as a whole because now we're going to see more budget friendly alternatives for players that cannot afford to buy those triple R's or VR's because all our great fours are VR's and only idolize is a triple R. Now we can have a rare and with the upcoming trial deck for Chronojet that's going to be even more budget friendly because that deck is going to probably contain another great four so we have two different great fours that are cheap and Chronojet, as being in a trial deck, will be a cheap grade 3 with the whole pseudo stride skill ability. So now budget players can build a actual working functioning Gear Chronicle build for a couple of bucks. So that is pretty nice in itself that this is going to provide some budget alternatives and options for those specific players. But for more competitive and full bling or full value players, this card is probably not going to be something for you. But what is is the following grade 3, because this thing is nuts. As we have Singing Dancing Grace Colossus. And this beast has the following ability. Auto record circle, one place, cause bind the card from your hands, and until the end of turn, when your opponent would call a card from, from their hand to the guardian circle, he or she must call two or more at the same time. All right, so first off, standard. This is actually a nice support card for Lost Legend because now we have another great free that binds cards from hands to do something. We're not cycling, so we're not drawing more cards like all the other typical cards do. But in exchange, all of our attacks for that turn get a Battle Dory effect. And that combats the main issue that the Lost Legend Mystery Flare build had. And that was perfect guards. That deck would falter against a pretty defensive protect deck or a deck that suddenly had two or three PGs in their hand by, by the sheer amount of luck that they had. And if that happened, Gears would basically do two turns nothing. Now with this card, even if they had that scenario, you're gonna force a lot of cards from their hand because you're already hitting with high numbers very easily and early on. So getting the battle door effect on all your attacks is a Big deal, because that means 9 cards, at least, from their hand for that turn. That is already pretty good. This can also maybe synergize with uh, Fang and Rebellion, but it's a bit too early to suggest that, as we also have the Grade 2 that has the same ability with the discard synergy, but the deck... We have to wait and see what the other cards are going to do and if we might get a better support grade 3. There's also like the chance that the support grade 3 is going to be Lost Legend and that's it. Just to have the superior right uh, consistency. And this won't see its effect because we already have the minus guard value uh, guard restrict in effect with the Rebellion. So this Battle Dora ability on top of that might not really do that much for the deck as a whole. But if we take a look at premium, this card can put in some insanely working for the deck as premium is all about either high powered attacks or multi-tech with vanguards or multi-tech with rearguards and that 
it's in some extent what Gear Chronicle Time you can do. Not the high powered numbers per se, but they can multi-attack a lot. And also with our Vanguard, with Next Stage and Gear Groovy. So if we use this card in Time Leap, which can multi-attack pretty easily between six to nine attacks, and maybe even more if you're a bit lucky. And if all those attacks have a Battle Door effect on top of them, it doesn't matter that your attacks are only between the 21 and the 25k mark, because if they don't get a defensive trigger, or they're already at a five damage, your opponent is gonna think twice before they're gonna take a damage or not. Because having the Battle Door effect on all your attacks effectively means you're gonna rip through 10 to 14 cards a turn. And not a lot of decks can contain that or sustain that amount of guard potential in their hand. Sure, some attacks can be stopped with one card if they use a G-Guard, but then again, that's a G-Guard they need to wait for such a low value attack, and you're gonna come in with a couple of more at the same time. And they also need to stop your Vanguard, and those are gonna probably gonna be pg but if they got a PG, that's three cards from hand for that single Vanguard attack, which you usually only would have used two cards. And you can say, well, they're gonna ditch a lot of Great Freeze, but Great Freeze and Premium actually have a lot of values because you need to have them for rewriting for more marker generation, but also for the stride cost. And in some builds, like Ezel, for example, for the ultimate stride, you need those specific great free. So if you're forced to guard more and more from hand, you are actually out of losing your win condition and you can effectively lose the game right then and there. Is this card going to make a difference in premium? It might be a little bit too early to say that, but the effectiveness about this card is that you can search it out with timely during the battle phase, mid battle, mid, mid combo. So, depending on the scenario, you don't have to have this thing in hand to activate it on the timing. You can do it mid-battle without your opponent even realizing what's gonna happen, and maybe they took one or two damage, and then you go into this thing and they're like, oh crap, I should have guarded before going. So, with this card in mind, people might have a bigger incentive to guard your first attacks if they can still guard them with one attack, and so they can save up hand once this thing hits the field. And that overtly also works in your favor because as I explained earlier, most of your attacks with Malum with the whole Elite 4 is 21k on a force marker. So with a 22 and 23k base, one defensive trigger will stop most of your multi-poke attacks. So if they're now forced to guard those first few attacks to prevent them losing their entire hand thanks to this singing, dancing, grace, colossus, that might actually work in your favor. Honestly, I wouldn't have suspected that a Gear Colossus w could potentially save premium gears. Not even to mention Time Leap gears. So yeah, what a time to be alive. It really is a strange and bizarre adventure. But that's basically everything for today's Road to Next Stage video. Let me know in the comments down below what you guys thought of these new Grade 4. That's probably a budget alternative for budget players, as well as this interesting and potentially very powerful grade three for gear chronicles and what do you expect if we get some help of the orcus engine from Yu-Gi-Oh into gears itself yeah you can expect some crazy shenanigans so let me know all your thoughts and opinions in the comments down below and i will see you guys wherever this road might take us next as always this video has been brought to you by our lovely patrons over at patreon.com slash vanguard insider if you do want to support the channel or everything that's happening on the channel then head over to patreon.com slash vanguard insider and become a patron today but with that said i'm mr time Leap, and i see you guys in the next one